Hi, I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage, and we're having our monthly tech meet for the Rolls-Royce Owners Club of Southern California. Uh, today we're going to be taking apart a GM Hydromatic 4-speed transmission that they used in the uh, R-Types and uh, Silver Cloud series. Now, on this transmission, you've got a band here, a band here. So this is a servo for the rear band, this is a servo for the front band. Inside, you've got two drums that have clutch discs in them with pistons. So that's a clutch pack and a, and a clutch pack. Um, when the car is in neutral, everything is released. When you go in first, I think both, front, both bands grab the outside. You drive. And when it goes to second, I think the front band comes off. I have it on a sheet here. It's on the sheet. Yeah. Pretty sure, yeah, the front band comes off second. Um, third gear, this is the one that's the hardest to get to shift right. Third gear, so when you're in second, what you've got is you've got, uh, what is it again? It's, you've got the first gear is just the band, second gear, the front clutch comes on and the front band comes off. So two things happen. Third gear, what happens is the rear band comes off, the rear clutch comes on, the front clutch comes off, and the front band goes on, right? Is that how it works? Yes. So you got four things happening, and that's the hardest shift to get right. For old mechanical issues, uh, that's, that's why I said it's kind of an art to get that feel because there's so many factors involved. First of all, you've got the old mechanical issues, but then you've got a poor running car, you're going to have the throttle more into it. So it's going to confuse the transmission, it's going to shift at the wrong spots. Um, they're interrelated. Very much so. What, and what, then, what are the RP or the uh, miles per hour that first, second, and third should be shifting? You said uh, 12 to 15 on the first, right? Uh, yeah, you know, I usually like to set them. There's, there's three shifts. You got first to second, second to third, third to fourth. I usually like them around 12, 22, 30. That's and it depends really on your throttle position about how you can uh, change the way the transmission shifts by how you, you throttle. You can ease up a little bit and Robert was easing up on that really harsh shift and I told him no, lay into it more and it shifted better because it's sensing more throttle pressure. So third, third gear is at 30 miles an hour? That's, that's an average. It all depends on where you, what kind of acceleration you got going on because if you're hard into it, it's going to go out a lot further. I think 50 is the max you can get on this in third gear. I don't know. It's all written down someplace, so I don't have to store it up here. All right. So I showed you how those things worked. Uh, if you're just changing the front pump, like I said, or the seal, you got to pull this front servo off. To get the front servo off, you got to pull the rear servo off with it. Uh, we might do some more squirting here. So once. I got this tube out and the other two tubes. Now I need to loosen these up. Here we go. So as you can see, these kind of almost come up together. Now the reason this front pump's a little tricky to get out is you've got a, another one of those tubes, a straight tube that goes down there. And what you've got this, this clutch or this uh, band that wants to push it off. Well, yeah, well, that, we're not putting it together in, today. <laughs> that goes for all repairs, doesn't yeah. it? Uh, well, the together part is the most critical because you want it to work right. So Ronnie, you just casually throwing all those parts into that box. Only one way. When you're going back together? Yes. You do only go one way. I've if done... Bolts, no, you don't have different length bolts that need to... Well, you do have lift, different length bolts. The ones that were most important... The one that was most important, I forgot to show you guys, um, is this one right here. It can screw into this housing and crack it. So that front servo is going to be losing pressure. It's going to bind it because there's a piston in there. Um, so other than that, most of the bolts only go back to the right. You'll figure it out pretty easily. Um, 
Now we're to the point to where we can actually get this front pump off. The reason we had to take all this stuff off is there's tubes going in there to hold it. Uh, we also got one more thing here. We have got the uh, pressure control relief valve here. Watch your step. You're gonna. Um, What have you uh, torqued to a particular uh, tighten up? Tighten up. Tighten up. Okay. So there's no, you know, 40 the, pounds of torque. There's a whole list of torque specs in the book. But not necessary to do it quite that way. You just do it by. Mm. Well. I recommend if you don't know what you're doing, yes. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I, I've done a lot of these. I, I usually know when I'm over tightening something because it's too late. <laughs> Snap! That's oh, right no. Thank you. Oh, how? Oh, it got really easy all of a sudden. <laughs> Must have been something in there I ran over, huh? <laughs> okay, here's your pressure control valve. And this is a multi part, so if anybody pulls this apart, be careful because you can lose all these things. <laughs> and these are all critical. You don't want to leave any of this stuff out because it won't work. <laughs> Do they go in more than one way? Is there a well, they, they, you can put them in upside down, oh, backwards. Okay. So um, they are different. Yes, I don't. I don't want to. Orientation. Yes. You didn't throw that in the bin. <laughs> Fine. All right, here we go. One more hose change. It's a complicated deal. Bro. I'm not always a scatterbrain, but when I got a crowd watching me and I get questions all the time. Um, I'm much more efficient. What's that? But every subject is different. I try to do that at least. If anybody out there, just by the, by the way, uh, watching this video has any questions, um, feel free to contact me at the email that will be posted on the video. Uh, any topics that anyone might like. Um, Please let me know. We'd like to cover as many things as we can. Now, there we go. We have another. Before this pump will come out, it's it's held on with another snap ring, a steel thrust washer which goes on the outside, and a composite brass, whatever it is, thrust washer. And that's to keep this everything in the right place. See how that floats? If you don't have it, that's that's the drive for the pump. So now we've got the two bolts that hold the pump on in the front. I was talking and I didn't show. There is, on one of the holes, there is a step down shoulder that's bigger. There's a washer that goes in there. And what that does is it go, it's indexed into that outside part of this pump housing to hold that, keep that from spinning. It's not very likely it's gonna spin, or I think not, not that so much. Maybe it's just to put it in the right position. But if you're paying attention, you should anyways. But anyways. When you say index, you mean it's actually screwed right into it? So it's no. What we've got is we've got an extra washer there. Oh, okay. And there's a cutout on this, this outer flange, which I'll show you when I get it off. So the washer that, seats in that. Right. So it's in the right position. Mm -hmm. it's experience is hard to match. Well, just like when yeah. we saw the ceiling ring on the governor's Yeah. Right away. Well, that's a problem, yeah. Mm -hmm. And anybody who's a professional who does transmissions would see the same thing. Uh, maybe not so much on this old transmission. There's not a lot of shops that still do these old ones. Um, all right, this is your front pump. This is what supplies most of the pressure to the uh, transmission to tell everything what to do. This right here. Inside, it's a vein type pump. I think, yeah. And this center part right here has a notch in it that hooks into this woodruff. So it turns it. So that big housing that's bolted to the flywheel turns this. So this is spinning when the engine's running. Okay? And that makes this build pressure. The paper gasket, there we go. That's, it's thin. It's very thin. Why? It's like a, some, a grocery bag thin. A lot of rubbish. Because it's... How did they do that? <laughs> Why would they use a thing like that? They're British. <laughs> they were designed by I wonder how much that costs. Oh, you want to see? Oh, you want to see the paper? 
Is that what's left of it? Yeah. Well, it, it came came apart when I pulled it out. I usually put RTV. I put sealer on it just to. And the gasket. And the gasket. And the yeah. gasket. Mm -hmm. Now a lot of I think American Trans this, so this they have O-rings. So this paper just disintegrated. Only when I pulled it off. Yeah, Sometimes. <laughs> But that was where your leak was coming from, wasn't it? No, it's coming from this front seal. Pretty sure. Mm -hmm. I see. There's a rubber seal in there that fits into that sleeve on the outside of the torus. So, well, all right. Now I'm gonna just throw this stuff over there. Yes. Pull up.